Somebody sent me on a video that was uploaded in God's Cottage channel by Father Taddy and um, it was criticising Taylor Marshall. And I, and I do have to agree with Father that, you know, traditional Catholics, Catholic bloggers, we do fall in sometimes to dividing the church, to being very hurtful in our comments. And it's something that, you know, I've I've constantly tried to correct because, you know, our Lord has said to me in prayer, Robert, don't divide the church. So I'm kind of, oh, what am I doing wrong here? What is the Holy Spirit trying to say to me? You know, I do want to bring people to this beautiful encounter with Christ in the faith. It's hard to get this balance right sometimes because Christ is so amazing. This Our experience of Christ in prayer is so amazing. But at the end of the day, but then when you're in your commentary on the channel, you can go into the other extremes and be very hurtful and not be, and not be um, bringing people to the truth instead of turning people off the faith and turning people, you know, away from this beautiful encounter with Christ. However, you know Taylor Marshall, he put out that video about the icon where Christ had been cut out. I didn't comment on it. I don't didn't say put anything on my channel because I really. I don't know the context and I didn't know anything else. And then Father came up today in God's Cottage with that video is Taylor Marshall, a false prophet. So I said, look, I'll, I'll try and find out who is this artist that that uh, Zelinsky gave uh, to uh, Zelinsky gave the icon to. Now, <laughs> I think we need to be careful also about canonizing Zelinsky. Um, you know, my wife comes from Ukraine and, you know, she does remember the time that the U Ukrainian insurgent army massacred 100,000 Polish people. So, you know, my, as my wife would remember those times when, you know, the Ukrainian, I mean, we cover them in glory in a bit at this moment in time. But, you know, in the 1940s, they, the Ukrainian insurgent army, it's all there. It's all in the web. You know, my wife remembers it. Her family come from there, killed 100,000 Polish speaking ethnic poles were killed so to say that uh you know ukraine has covered itself in glory over the decades really is a lot of propaganda there scratch under the surface i'm sure i'm sure you'll find a different story and uh, i'm just quoting history here not not trying to insert my any politics into here i'm just quoting history you know, in all of the troubles that we had in Ireland, we had, what, 3,000 people dead. And at the end of that troubles, we had to say, with that piece of land in Northern Ireland, we had to remove our claim in the Constitution to have peace. And we're not able to say the exact same thing between Russia and Ukraine. We're not able to give a piece of advice that will stop, I mean, 300,000 have dead, died in this, in this conflict. As regards the icon, as regards the icon and the artist... I just want to play you a piece of footage here so you can put this artist and that icon in context and then I'll give a little bit of commentary on this. Some people have been commenting on the icon that uh, Zelensky gave Pope Francis in Rome. This is an icon painted by uh, Oleski Revika or uh, an artwork painted by him where our Lord is absent and it signifies the thousands of kids that have been uh, taken to Russia during from the Russian controlled Russian speaking area of uh, Ukraine. And um, I, there's been a lot of debate and Taylor Marshall has gone into it. I mean, I, I wouldn't. Uh, and there's been a lot of criticism of Pope Francis on this icon. Now, that particular icon doesn't offend me that much. It's not like um, they've disfigured our Lord. He's, uh, it's, it's really removing him to give a message. Now, whether it's, it should or shouldn't be done, uh, it's another story. But this is horrific. This is horrific. I don't care what you think. And I don't care what people are trying to defend. This is horrific. This is a disfigured image of Our Lady. And the artist has replaced Our Lord Jesus Christ with the bombs in Russia. Now, I don't, I mean, it's, there's very little I can say uh, to defend something like this. So there you see two different icons being used for, to give a political statement. Um, one 
which was presented to the Pope and the other obviously was not presented to the Pope. Um, you know, and th this image of Our Lady, where, you know, the, the second image with the disfigured, uh, Our Lady's face disfigured into a kind of a skull and she's holding bombs instead of, of Christ. You know, it's obviously, <laughs> he's obviously pointing this towards the Russians. And uh, I, I'm sure there's an explanation. I'm sure there's an artistic explanation why they're doing this. But I honestly think, guys, my personal opinion, and it's nothing to do with Pope Francis here. I'm not getting into the debate on Pope Francis because Pope Francis has nothing to do with this. He didn't ask for that icon. He didn't ask to get involved in this. This was a political manoeuvre by Zelensky who introduced this artwork and this artist into the Vatican for good or for bad, not for me to judge. But I don't think Our Lady should be used as a political tool. I really don't. Because if there's ever hope of peace, you know, those icons are sacred in Ukraine. Those icons are sacred in Russia. You know, that icon of Our Lady holding our Lord, the infant child, is sacred on both sides. And we should not introduce her as a tool to destroy both sides. I mean, I have friends in both countries. One of the last countries I visited before the lockdown was, was Russia. I went to the Kremlin. I went to Red Square. I went to St. Saviour's. Um, and I have friends there, you know, obviously through work. <laughs> Sadly, those friends have been made unemployed. And, you know, polit politics aside, there are some amazing Russians, you know, and it's deeply, deeply sad for me. And amazing Ukrainians, Ukrainian friends as well. Uh, Ukrainians that I met on the Camino. So if you're watching my channel, because I know you do, you know, I, I love, I love my Orthodox friends, my Greek Catholic friends. You're all very dear to me. But um, I just don't think, I just don't think Our Lady should be used as a pawn in a political propaganda game. Um, and to think that everything is rosy with Zelensky is to ignore the facts. You know, he has stood over uh, and allowed 150 plus thousand Ukrainian soldiers to die in this conflict. And people were saying, well, what are the options, Robert? Well, maybe the options for Ukraine would have been to do what happened in Georgia. That they allowed the Russian speaking enclaves to be annexed. Or do you want to stand over thousands and thousands and thousands of more people dying? And, you know, I, do we want to stand over thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of more people dying? I mean, NATO went into Afghanistan, you could say for good or for bad. Uh, the West, many countries, UK included, went into Iraq for so-called weapons of mass destruction that don't exist. And for years, Ukraine has been pushing to, for NATO membership to put weapons on Russia's doorstep. If Russia tried to put weapons in Cuba, you know what crisis. Of, I mean, I'm just stating facts, guys. Are we going to create a world of dialogue? Or are we just going to say, oh, no, those eight million people, eight million ethnic Russians that exist in, in Ukraine, they actually don't exist. You know, what are you going to do with the largest Russian speaking population outside of Russia? Nobody's able to answer these questions. Nobody. And what seems to be happening is we are standing over the, gen the, the slaughter of hundreds of thousands, mostly men on both sides. Very, very sad. And I, I honestly don't think Our Lady, that Our Lady should be used as a political tool. I don't think we should be using icons of Our Lady to give a point. And that's just my, my opinion. And again, it's nothing to do with Pope Francis here. This is, this is uh, you know, at some stage somebody has to go, they need, they need to sit down at a table and face each other and decide, you know, and compromises will be made. You know, Crimea, 95% ethnic Russians uh, with Russia's largest military base. Um, you know, uh, so it's not an easy situ situation and people think I'm pro-Russia or I'm pro-this, I'm pro I'm pro-that. 
um, because I know uh, some some make this commentary. I am absolutely not pro anything. I'm pro peace. I am pro peace. Pro stop killing people. Um, I don't think Russia should have gone into Ukraine. But I don't think Ukraine can ignore 8 million Russians in their own borders and say they don't exist and they don't, you know, they should not have um, rights to practice their own religion and language, you know, because now uh, Zelensky has gone, gone after the Orthodox Church in, in Ukraine under Moscow. So they're dividing themselves even further. And where will this end? Nothing will end. It'll end in partition. And that, that's really where it is. The writing is on the wall for a long time. This war will keep going for as long as NATO pumps weapons into Ukraine. And people will keep dying for as long as weapons are pumped into Ukraine. Um, so, anyway. Let's pray that this ends. God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.